We're going to be starting in just about two minutes. Uh, we have a bunch of people filing in from the waiting room, so I want to give them a chance to join, and then we'll get started. So just uh, stay put for a minute or two, and then we will uh, get this thing kicked off. And thanks again, everyone, for joining. And if in the chat, um, for folks that are here, if you could just introduce yourself, let us know where you're checking in from, if you want to share your location, your school name, and uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. we got a bunch of folks here. Should be a great session. And if you're also watching, feel free, especially for those of you who are on X, send out a tweet, tag us. Let us know that you're participating at Go Gipper, that you're here uh, developing as an AD and uh, hopefully joining what's going to be a super helpful uh, session here. And again, just a minute or two, and then we'll kick it off. <clears throat> awesome. We got folks nationwide here, West Coast to East Coast, all over the country. So awesome to see you. Thank you again for everyone uh, for joining. My name is Matthew Glick. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am the founder and CEO of Gipper. And if you're not familiar with Gipper, we are the leading content creation and marketing platform for athletic departments. We're used by over 4,000 athletic departments from small middle school programs all the way up to powerhouse collegiate division one programs. But really our focus and our bread and butter is working with high school athletic departments. Uh, we know the challenges that you all face. We're going to talk about a lot of those today. And we provide tools that make it really easy to create social media content, graphics, digital newsletters, uh, to be able to tell your program story, but in seconds on any device and without needing any sort of design experience. Today's session is on digital marketing, but with a big asterisk, which is for the modern but busy athletic director. And we have a fantastic guest who's going to be participating in this webinar as well. Colin Fegley, the athletic director at Green Level High School. Colin is the former president of the North Carolina Athletic Directors Association and a former North Carolina Athletic Director of the Year. So we have a fantastic guest. I want to uh, give Colin a chance to say hi to everyone. He'll be obviously a big part of this today. But Colin, uh, you know, give a shout out to everyone in the chat here that uh, uh, you're participating. Absolutely, Matthew. Thank you so much. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, my name is Colin Fegley. I'm the athletic director at Green Level High School in, in Cary, North Carolina. Uh, we're nestled in the Triangle area right between Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill in Cary. Uh, we have about 2,300 students and a relatively new school. We're starting our sixth school year. Awesome. All right, so let's jump into it. Again, the whole premise of this is not a Gipper demo. This is really professional development. We want to give you the tools to be able to tell your program story, celebrate your athletes, shape positive perception around your athletic department, your school, your district, and even potentially generating meaningful revenue, all with limited time and resources. Everyone here, if you're working within a high school athletic department, you face challenges in terms of time and resources. Yes, some departments have more, others have less, but we all face this challenge. This presentation is built with that in mind. So a quick agenda for the lay of the land. We're going to start by talking about dealing with reality. This is going to touch on a number of sort of key facts that shape this presentation and really why it's so essential to be a marketer as a high school athletic director. Then we're going to go through actual digital marketing basics for high school athletic departments. So we're going to talk about the basics. We could do more in-depth uh, webinars, but we want to make sure in the course of the next 30 to 45 minutes uh, that we're giving you the basic foundation to go ahead and be successful. And then we're going to talk about how technology can do the work for you, how you can leverage technology to make sure that this is feasible, despite those constraints that you face within your departments. And if you have time, uh, we'll do a Q&A. Please post questions in the chat. Our team will mark them throughout. And then at the end, we will, uh, if we have time, get to them, or we can follow up afterwards. But please drop in your questions. Uh, we're here to help today. All right, so let's start by talking about dealing with reality. So there's three sort of buckets 
of facts that we're going to be talking about in more detail in just a moment. I'm going to summarize them right now. One is life as a high school athletic director. This is not a division one collegiate athletic director webinar, right? This is a webinar geared towards life as a high school athletic director because you face real constraints in the role, limited time and resources. We have to face that and talk about ways that we can make this work within that existence and that experience. And then we're gonna talk about transformations in community expectations. Uh, this is specifically related to K-12 and K-12 athletics specifically. Uh, this is a really unique time and uh, it's important to, again, be grounded in this reality. And then the final thing is the digital evolution that's really transpired over the last five to 10 years, these transformations in community engagement. And all of this is going to end up with the sentiment that you need to, as a high school athletic director, whether it was in the job description or not, you need to be a marketer, not solely a marketer, right? You wear many hats. You need to be a num doing a number of other great things, but you need to have marketing within the tool belt. You need to be a marketer. And hopefully at the end of this, we can give you the tools to get you here, which is what Colin has done at green level over the last few years, which has been tremendous in marketing and communications, uh, just incredible, incredible work. And it's something that every department in the country can do. You can all get to this. And Colin's gonna be sharing some insights from the seat uh, of the AD, that lived experience. And again, hopefully we can get you here. But I wanna, Colin, I wanna tee you up and I wanna go back to this point right here, the modern AD as a marketer. This is something that you've really taken on before I even got to know you. Can you talk about just at a high level, why this matters? I know you've talked about telling the story. Why, why does this matter? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think marketing our programs has become part of the job. It is truly part of our day-to-day -day operation at this point. Um, our families and our community expect frequent and good communication. Our student athletes expect us to be active on social channels. Um, as an athletic director, uh, we have the unique ability to tell the story of our athletic program. And with some of the changes in local media and some of the other things that are happening, maybe um, you know, on, on a broader scale, uh, we have a really unique opportunity as building ADs to tell the story of our athletic program to help control that narrative. And I do want to say um, that previous slide, there was a whole lot of different things on there, um, athletic websites and digital media and all we're doing um, on, on social and things like that. But it takes a village. Uh, it takes a village to run a high school athletic program. We all know that you've got to surround yourself with good people. And there is some incredible talent in each and every one of your buildings. Uh, and we'll talk more about this, but think about those around you that could help you kind of create this miniature marketing empire that you're trying to build for your school. Awesome. All right. So first, let's just dive into this first fact, right? Life as a high school athletic director. Again, uh, you are not the athletic director at in Oregon or in Alabama or University of South Carolina. You have real constraints when it comes to uh, time resources. You are busy. I know for every athletic director out there, it feels like a new thing is added to your list of to-dos and responsibilities, yet the resources don't scale, right? You don't get necessarily more people to help with it. And so it's really, really challenging. Uh, it's a problem. And so um, as Colin, you sort of just referenced, right? You can't do it all. It takes a village and that can be, uh, that help can be found in the people of your program. It can also be found in the tools and software and technology that's available today. And so that's gonna be a big part of this presentation. Right. How can we help from a technology standpoint, do the work for you? And how can you potentially also find other folks that can help within the program? And then we have uh, transformations in K-12 education and athletics. So there's a number of things here that I'm going to talk about. But the first is this skyrocketing, skyrocketing community uh, expectations. Just at a general standpoint, there's never been a bigger magnifying glass on K-12 education and K-12 athletics. Never been a bigger magnifying glass. The community of parents, families, athletes have never had higher expectations across the board. Facilities, athletic experience, quality of education. And then communication is a huge one. And this has really come out of um, changes uh, outside of COVID where there was just this shift where 
folks were expecting information to be shared to them on the channels they live all the time. It's not enough for your community, whether right or wrong, for you to say, oh, that's on the website, right? People aren't going through the district website, flipping through all the different pages to find that one piece of information. They're expecting you to be sending that information to them on the places that they live day in, day out digitally and in their kind of communication methods. So there's been this real skyrocketing uh, expectation there. And then you have this expansion of school choice and increased fundraising pressure, where the expansion of school choice, um, th there's never been more options. And there's never been more options when it comes to where you as a student or a parent decide to send your kid to school. But there's also never been more options when it comes to playing sports in education-based athletics. So yeah, expansion of school choice, um, online school, sort of non-traditional schooling opportunities that are out there means that every school in the world is having to market and sort of win students. But once you get someone in your building, there's this other challenge, which is, are they going to participate in education-based athletics? There's this explosion of club AAU sports that now is increasingly kind of pulled students away from school-based athletics. And then the other thing is there's so many other options for students in terms of what they participate in where they may just simply not want to play sports within your school. And one of the biggest things, believe it or not, that's pulling kids away is social media. I mean, you're competing in a sense with some of these massive, massive organizations that are taking the attention away from you and pulling your kids into other activities or not into activities at all. And so again, from like a marketing standpoint, you need to be sending that message, communicating about all the great things, all the great reasons why folks should not only be coming to your school, but also participating in athletics, period. And then the final thing is this uh, kind of changing landscape and fundraising. There's always uh, budget challenges. There's always needs for more uh, revenue, but there's also been this change in sort of monetization uh, within athletic departments, where you look at ticket sales, donations, team-based fundraising, sponsorships from traditional sponsorships like digital board, physical signage, uh, to more modern, newer forms of uh, sponsorship, social media sponsorship, uh, email newsletter sponsorship. Um, there's all of these new ways to get money into the program, and there's increasing need for those funds to have a great and create a great experience. So the bottom line is that as an athletic department, you're competing, whether you like it or not, for students and funding. Colin, any uh, thoughts about this from, from your perspective? That's incredibly well said. Uh, one of the things I focus on and as athletic directors, you know, we're all competitive. And I think that marketing component, you know, essentially we are we are competing for our own kids. We are competing for the children in our communities to come to our school uh, in our area. You know, there's been a huge influx of, of charter schools and parochial schools and private schools. Lots of different options out there for our students and their families to go to those schools. And they do great things. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not out here to, um, you know, to talk down about them or, or badmouth them, but it's my job and it's your job as the athletic director at your school to do everything you can to build, you know, a, a great athletic department, make a program um, that uh, is enticing to the kids. We want it to be fun, but one of the best ways, of course, we can market is, is through social media. And we do everything in our power to market our program and to bring kids into our school and into our programs. Um, we want to w win them. It, nothing hurts worse than when you hear, you know, a kid might be transferring to a, to another school locally or uh, they're gonna play club ball this year. They're just gonna do AAU. Um, that to me is a loss. Um, so as an athletic director, really, really important for each of us in our schools, all of us are in a very different environment to do all we can to bring our kids into our program. And some of the technology out there today can really help us do that. Awesome. And this transformation in community engagement, as well as this, this other reality I want to dig into, right? You have social media dominance over the past five, 10 years, right? Social media has taken off the rise of uh, Instagram, now TikTok. Uh, this is the channel where your stakeholders spend their most, uh, the most of their time, right? And so maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, this wasn't the case, um, but now there's the social media dominance. You also have this proliferation of uh, mobile phones, the sort of rise of the smartphone, and now the increasing capacity of the smartphone to do everything anyone could ever want. And so you have these stakeholders that just live day in and day out on their phones. We've all seen this, right? If 
uh, folks have kids. Uh, obviously, you're in the school. You see uh, how kids are interacting with their devices, right? This is a mobile first world. People are glued to their phones for better or for worse. And then you have the decline of local media where maybe that newspaper that used to be reporting on and telling your department's story isn't anymore. And then the final thing is this uh, sort of engagement and action challenge where the modern consumer or individual is lazy. We are all lazy when it comes to our interactions, particularly online. And so getting people to do things is a really big challenge. And so you have to make it really easy if to reduce the friction to get people to take that next step, whether it's filling out a form, buying a ticket, whatever it may be, again, as consumers, better or worse, we're lazy and you got to make it easy. And that's a big challenge. But the, the, again, the bottom line, the big kind of take home point is that the way that your stakeholders engage with your program has changed. And therefore your marketing, your communication strategies of 10 years ago, of even five years ago, they have to change too in order to be effective. Colin, you've talked about the decline of local media before. Could you share kind of your experience with this, your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I essentially work in the same district that I went to high school in. And, and I remember when I was in high school, you know, we would we'd be really excited on Saturday morning to get the local paper and open it up and, and read the recap of the game and, and look at some of the photos. Uh, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we do have uh, one local outfit that, that covers high school sports on a, a digital scale, and they do a nice job with it. But um, for the most part, it just doesn't exist. So we now essentially have become our own communication shop, right? Um, we're the one recapping the games. We're the one providing the content, the images, the game day graphics, the final score information that our families and our students expect. And quite honestly, I think in many ways we do it better than it used to be done. And um, each of you and your programs can do that. I've often described a, a new school year as just a new chapter in a book. Um, it's a great time as we're, we're heading back to school. Some of you, I'm sure, have already started. Some of you, like us, are starting next week or the week after. Uh, this is an awesome time to just kind of rethink how you're communicating um, information about your programs with your communities. And um, just know that uh, as an athletic director, it's one more thing to put on your plate. Um, that's our responsibility, our responsibility to inform our communities, our families, and uh, make sure people uh, know what's going on in our program. Um, it's, it's central. Awesome. So again, to recap all of this together, as an AD, you can't do it all. You need help. As a K-12 athletic department, whether you like it or not, you're competing for students and funding. And then the way that your stakeholders engage with your department, parents, students, family members, coaches, teachers, administrators, that has all changed. And therefore your communications and marketing strategies need to change too. So what now, right? Again, the take home message, athletic departments need to adopt modern digital marketing, but using, and this is the big asterisk and the important asterisk, using tactics and tools that make it quick and easy to be successful. Because you can't just expect to take on the work that a whole collegiate marketing team takes on. That's not the reality of your situation. So again, that asterisk is so important. You've got to make it quick and easy so that you can be successful. Okay, so let's talk about it. Digital marketing basics for the modern K-12 athletic department. We're going to touch on three things. Again, this is a foundational setup when it comes to your digital marketing. We're going to talk about brand, channels, and content. To start with brand, Colin, again, this is something that we've talked about previously. Why does brand matter to you? Uh, as an athletic director in your athletic department. Yeah, absolutely. So as we all know, uh, for good or bad, uh, the athletic department is oftentimes the face of the school. Um, you know, my principal describes it as the front porch of the school. People often know our schools from our communities who maybe don't have kids here uh, by, our, by our logos, our colorways, maybe seeing a, a magnet or a sticker on a car driving past campus. So brand is our identity. Um, and it's really important for our athletic programs to have that unique brand, that unique identity, because that really is the foundation for everything that we do when it comes to communication, uh, to branding our campuses, to um, upgrading our facilities, to making um, you know what I describe as a collegiate level atmosphere um, in a high school building. Uh, so brand is key. Uh, so I would encourage everybody to kind of think about your brand. Um, you know, do you know your colors? Do you know your Pantones? Are you using consistent logos? Um, do you know what your logos are? I mean, these are all legitimate questions and a really good place to start um, because without a brand, you know, you really do lack an identity. 
Awesome. And so um, we're going to talk about a few different things here. What is your why when it comes to the brand? Uh, what we call the brand promise, visual branding, and brand perception. And I think perception is a key thing that we're going to be talking about today that's really, really important. And so to jump into it, what is your why? If we're thinking about creating a brand around an athletic department, and again, an athletic department could have been around for 20, 30, 40 years, but maybe you haven't done the work to really define the brand. The place that we always recommend starting is actually around this larger question of what is your why? What, what is the reason that your department exists? Document that, and that will be sort of this basic foundation of the brand, right? Why, as an athletic department, do you exist? And that can be different for different departments, different ADs. I can't tell you the answer, but we definitely recommend starting here and answering this question. And then what is the brand promise, right? What is the value or experience your stakeholders can expect to receive every single time they interact with your department? You have lots of different stakeholders, right? What is that experience that you're looking to create? So an example could be professionalism and dedication to the best student athlete experience. And it should extend from that why, right? So again, ask the question, what is your why? Document it. And then what is your brand promise, right? What is that experience that you're looking to create every single time? And then visual branding and this is exactly what colin was talking about and this is critical when it comes to your digital marketing and communications you want to create a style guide or maybe another term that you've heard is a brand book that houses official logos official colors and official fonts for those watching if you could put in the chat which official logos colors and fonts you have with as a department like if you have an official logo put that in. If you have official logo and colors, put that in. If you have official logo, colors, and fonts, put that in the chat so people can see. But for the most part, what we see is there's still a large number of departments out there that don't have official logos, colors, and fonts for their department. Some think they do, right? They say we're red or we're green, but color is a spectrum. There's lots of different shades. You need to know that specific color code, that hex code or Pantone, as Colin said, that represents that specific shade of red or shade of green. And then very few have official fonts. So the hope is, again, today we can get you to a point where you start to put together some official assets, official logos, colors, and maybe even fonts, and then house those in a document that outlines what they are. And if you don't know what to do here and you're not sure maybe we have these, maybe we don't, reach out to people in your department, reach out to people in your district. Often you may have a communications folk, a person that's uh, working at the district level, they may have a district brand book, speak with them about this or reach out to us, we can help. But this style guide will be the basis of creating consistent content because you would then use that official logo, official colors, official fonts on all of the content that you're creating, your graphics, your distributions with your newsletters, maybe even physical branding on campus. And therefore you can start to build consistency from a brand standpoint. And all great brands are formed on consistency because with consistency comes recognizability. If the New York Yankees had 300 different logos that they're posting all over the place, would that logo be as recognizable? No. And the same goes for your department. If your individual teams are all creating different types of logos, if you as a department is using all different types of logos, you're not going to have consistency and you're not going to be able to build recognizability, right? So rein it in reduce the total numbers, and then utilize them in all of your visual content so you can start to build a recognizable brand through consistency, right? Again, I just talked about it. It's such a key thing. But the final, the final I wanna move past the, the consistency point and talk about that feeling that the brand evokes, right? Colin talked about it when people are in the community, they see someone wearing a shirt, they see maybe uh, some you know visual content, maybe there's some signage on a football field People are going to get a feeling, right? No matter what. And that's based on the experience that they've had with the brand and with the program. What great branding does is it helps shape great perception, right? And from a department standpoint, you can be doing all of the best work. You can be doing incredible things in the building day in, day out. But if perception does not align with that reality, 
it's going to be really, really difficult. And that's unfair, but that's just how these things go. And oftentimes we hear this all the time is uh, it's the bad news that gets into the press that people talk about. It's always that one negative thing, but what about the hundred positive things? We want to make sure we give you the tools so that you can actually shape perception to match the reality of the great work that you're doing within your building. And branding and your visual identity is a huge part of that because if you have a professional, consistent brand that you're communicating out in all your different channels, what does that evoke? Professionalism. This department has it together. This department pays attention to details. This department cares. Versus if you have all inconsistent branding, you're not putting out any content, you're not sharing your story, what does that evoke? And a, an example I, I like to use, if you were going online shopping and you land on a website and everything's out of whack, there's inconsistent logos when you go to buy the item and then on the checkout page, there's all different fonts. Things are uh, looking visually confusing. Does that give you confidence that that's a good vendor to work with? Does that give you confidence that you would want to buy from that store online? This is the same thing with your visual branding, your communication as an athletic department. Right? If your facilities are a mess when people come in, what does that make them feel? Same thing from a brand standpoint digitally. Colin, anything you want to add there? No, I'm, I'm learning a lot myself. I appreciate this. I'm taking notes. Um, <laughs> but I, I think perception is key, right? I mean, all of us want as uh, athletic directors, our brand, our, our, our colorways, our logos to evoke positive perception, right? see it in the community you say oh yeah you know green level high school they do the things the right way over there they got good facilities you know top-notch coaches good kids um and, and a lot of times perception is just that it's perception folks may have no idea about the school they might not know our our academic history and how many kids we're sending to college and what our average sat scores they probably should that's more important than what i get to do every day with athletics although i think it's incredibly important uh, but oftentimes it's just that perception and uh, matthew hit the nail on the head when you think about some of those more recognizable brands in society today. When you see that logo from whatever company, what does it evoke in you? Do you want to go buy something from them? Or are you like, Ugh, do you I, trust them? Do you yeah. trust them? Right. Are they doing things the right way? Is it somebody you want to continue to do business with? Is it a place you like to visit? Is it a school that, you know, hey, we might be big time rivals, but it's always a good experience for visiting fans coming here because, you know, we, we roll out the red carpet for them. They know where to park, they know where the concession stand is. We're going to be kind. We're going to be generous. We're going to take good care of them when they're here. Um, all of that is built around your brand. And, and I have a note on, on the slide, right? Visual branding can only go so far. It can't mask actually bad experiences that are happening within the department. But I think for the vast, vast majority of athletic directors and athletic departments in the country, and I've spoken individually to thousands of ADs, the vast, vast majority are doing incredible work, incredible work in the building. But perception is not that, and that's not fair, that's not right, but that's the reality. And so uh, you need to be out there making sure that perception matches that reality. And if you do that, that's when the magic happens. That's when you'll see community engagement, involvement, more support. You'll be able to create more experiences that are positive for your student athletes, for your community. So that's the big message here, right? Think about perception, think about how brand impacts that, and make sure that you're doing the right things so that you're helping, not hurting. Okay, channels. So the channels are how you get the content out. So think of the medium used to market and communicate about your department. So right, different examples of channels could be social media, email, websites, maybe even a messaging app. And then in-person things such as events, like a game day event that's happening on campus, right? All of the, all of the ways that you get that information out. Omni-channel marketing, intimidating term, intimidating term, but I talk about it for a reason because it's critical in sort of business marketing and it reflects, uh, it, it's a term that should be important for athletic directors. So omni-channel marketing takes into account the stakeholder journey may span multiple channels. As an individual working or uh, let's say a parent that's interacting with the athletic department, you don't just interact with the athletic department in one single way. It's not just, I email Colin and that's my experience with the athletic department. I may get an email from Colin, come to a game to support my son or daughter. I may then go to the athletic website. I may follow the department on Instagram. I may see 
the facility as I drive by, right? This is an omni-channel experience. I may hear from someone else who had an experience with the department, right? That's the reality of how your community of stakeholders interacts with the world and interacts with your department. It's multifaceted, multi-channel. And so because of that, you wanna make sure that you're reaching people in a consistent way across all of those channels and in a way that's gonna be positively shaping perception. Let's dive into some of the channels specifically. So social media, the big ones, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Facebook. You'll see from a demographic standpoint how these platforms skew. I think everyone knows this now. Facebook, larger demographic, or older demographic, X, older demographic, a lot of media, particularly sports media as well, as well as fellow athletic departments. X is still the number one channel for high school athletic departments. TikTok, the youngest demographic, and Instagram, uh, right there, sort of bridging the gap between the age groups. Search engines versus social networks. So this is the big thing because there's still some people out there that see social media as, hey, that's not for me as an athletic department, or maybe that's not for me as a district. Um, you know, we communicate on our website, right? We put the content on our website. People can find it there. The world has changed, right? This is a uh, chart that shows the percentage of internet users who use each channel, search engines like a Google versus social networks, as a primary source of information when researching brands. And if you look at the 16 to 24 year old group, more of them go on social networks. And this is from 2021. These charts will continue to lean and skew towards social media. So 16 to 24 year olds, instead of looking up your school or athletic department on Google, they're going into Instagram, right? They're searching there to find the information. So if you don't have a presence, if you're not maximizing that digital real estate, what's gonna happen? You're gonna miss out or create a negative experience. If you're not telling your story, someone else is or no one is, right? And as folks age out, this trend is gonna only continue. So your parents are gonna be looking to social media more and more. Um, so it's really not um, just this sort of thing that you can look past because whether or not you're participating, your stakeholders are, and social media is the dominant channel. This is where they're going to find their information. And by the numbers, I think this won't surprise anyone, but 94% of Gen Z uses social media in 2022. It's gonna be a higher number today in 2024. And the average amount of minutes spent on social media every day by a Gen Zer, 158, two hours and 37 minutes, right? Folks are spending time, students, parents, community members, coaches, they are spending hours on these channels every day. They are living on these platforms. You need to be communicating on them. You need to have a presence on them. You need to be maximizing them. They're interacting more with your uh, with you on social media than with your website. Colin, anything you want to add there? No, it's spot on. Um, you're absolutely spot on. And one of the things I often think about is, yeah, there's some like work that goes into um, you know a great marketing strategy, but it saves us so much time on the back end. You're answering so many fewer questions, fielding so many fewer emails if you're communicating in this in this way. And sometimes your coaches need to have um, a bit of education on this as well. Um, there's been numerous times when, you know, a coach or one of our teams has wanted to get a message out to the kids really quick and maybe they throw it up on X and that's all they do. And then we have a lot of bad communication and, oh, I didn't hear that or I didn't know. And I said, coach, well, how did, how did you, how did you communicate? Well, I, I put up a post on X and I said, well, I said, the kids missed it. Said, the kids may not have seen that. Like probably should have put it on Instagram. Um, you probably should have considered more omni-channel marketing. It should have been on X. It should have been on Insta. It should have been pushed out. It should have been texted and it should have been emailed because everybody is going to, um, you know, kind of relate differently and, and, and use different uh, aspects of kind of this modern technology, including parents. So, um, you know, just something to consider about how you're communicating uh, a lot of different channels, um, but um, lots of different ways to get that information out uh, in a pretty efficient manner. Awesome. And the next channel emails, this is a great example Colin, where you're saying, you know, you put it on X, not everyone may see it, right? Because not everyone is on X. And even those that were on X, maybe they weren't on at that specific time, right? So another channel email, this is almost like a controversial channel. I think in high school athletics, there's a lot of different opinions because, uh, you know, you hear a lot, well, folks don't check emails, students don't check emails. 
And there is some truth to this absolutely for sure. But this again speaks to the omni, the importance of omni-channel communication. Um, but if you look at email specifically, 70% of US consumers prefer to be contacted by brands via email. 25% of people aged 18 to 35, your coaches, staff members, parents, administrators, admit to checking their email the first thing after waking up in the morning. And here's another nuance that is not getting talked about enough. Email is an owned channel with direct access to your stakeholders. What do I mean by that? Social media, critical communication channel, critical marketing channel, strategic channel, but you are at the whim of the algorithm. When you post on Instagram, you can't guarantee that that student, that coach sees it, right? And there's lots of other benefits to posting on Instagram, but you can't guarantee that that person sees that. It, that it even gets to them. With email, you actually own that list. You have their email, you can distribute it directly to them. They may not open it, but you know it's gonna land in that inbox. And you can keep that list. So for whatever reason you lose access to your social media account, that whole community is gone. But if you have that email list, you can reach out to those folks. You have the direct access. The next channel. So we talked social media, email, website. So right, the explosion of social media has rendered the traditional website less valuable. You see this all the time in uh, marketing today from a business perspective, things like e-commerce, right? The social platforms are becoming that touch point, that website in a sense for a customer. But it doesn't mean that a website is not important. It still is a very important channel for athletic departments everywhere. Right? You want to have that real estate covered because, again, people aren't necessarily all going to social media to find your school. They're going to search on Google. They're going to look for the Green Level Athletic Department website by typing it in on a search engine. You want to have a presence there. You want to make sure when people are looking that they can find you and that they have a good experience. But there's one other point that I want to uh, signal that's a new thing that every athletic department in the country should be doing, but it's the rise of the link and bio website. So if you've ever been on uh, Instagram and you've seen that there's a link on an account that when you click on it, opens up a website on your phone, but it holds other sites. It has links for other sites on it. This is known as a link and bio website that drives people to take action really, really easily and organizes the places that you want them to go in a simple, mobile optimized, easy to experience website. Every athletic department in the country should have something like this on their Instagram bio, on their Twitter bio, on any social platform versus just le linking directly to uh, your athletic website or not having a link at all. And Colin, you've used Linktree. You could actually create one of these in Gipper using Gipper newsletters, but could you just talk about that? Um, and folks, if you're wondering, I still don't quite get it, go to green, uh, tell folks where they can go find an example and uh, hopefully that makes it clear for folks. Yeah, a Lincoln bio site is, is huge. We have used Linktree. Uh, we are in the process of transitioning our Linktree to a Gipper newsletter, but uh, incredibly important, um, especially on Instagram where, where it's not very link friendly. Um, anytime that you're going to be pushing out information on Instagram outside of the, the photo or the image that you're, you're, you're broadcasting and the caption, if you want to include uh, websites, it's either got to be posted in a story um, or you're going to need to direct folks to your bio. And then if you go into the bio, you click that link, and then that's going to pull up that link in bio website that has all those important links that your athletic program relies on every day. Links to ticketing, to streaming, uh, to max preps, to you know schedules, you name it. Uh, so uh, really, really important. If you want to take a look at ours, um, we're at G underscore L underscore athletics. And you'll notice we have link in bio sites on both our X and our Instagram accounts. Uh, again, using Linktree now, but Gipper Newsletters has provided a really great tool to build some of these link in bio sites. And we're in the process of transitioning over to that uh, because it's way more eye-catching and um, user-friendly. So again, the, the big thing here when it comes to your website, you definitely want to have a presence. You want a website for your athletic department. You want to make sure that when someone searches for it, that they can easily find it. I've seen athletic departments out there that have changed providers and the old site is still up. That's a big no-no, very confusing for your community. So make sure that that's not the case. Google your department, make sure that you like the results. Um, and then make sure that that site is easy to, opti uh, sorry, easy to navigate, mobile optimized. When you open it on mobile, 
it's good for folks to use, it's not broken, and that it's fast. There's a lot of websites out there that are sort of overrun with sponsorship and advertising. They have really slow experiences. Um, you're gonna lose people um, as well. And the great thing about a Lincoln bio site, it's gonna be super quick and it's gonna direct people to the important pages that they need to go to. All right, moving on to content. So the content is the last uh, topic here from a branding standpoint. This is what is gonna end up in your communications that go through your channels. When it comes to creating content, you wanna leverage your official assets. So we think about the beginning of the conversation, create that style guide, make sure you have official logo, official colors, fonts, whatever it may be, and then implement that into your content. So your content should reflect your official branding as a department. We pulled some graphics from Colin and Green Level, so you can see this in play, right? They're leveraging the official branding of the department. And then photos and videos. So photos and videos are great content. It's great in newsletters. It's great on social media. Not everything needs to be a graphic, but also great photos and videos can make graphics even better. Um, there's different ways for you to get great content, but every department can do this. Every department can do this. I wanna talk about uh, Media Day. Colin, can you talk just briefly, because we're running a little bit late in time here, uh, how you do a Media Day and how it's helped? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, three Media Days a year, uh, fall, winter, spring. Our focus is on our seniors. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but we essentially do a senior Media Day. Uh, we bring in a local photographer. He's an incredible professional, takes unreal photos of our of our seniors. Uh, our arrangement is essentially that I get all of the, the, the raw images, so I can use those throughout the course of the season. Uh, to populate our social media channels. Um, you know, it's very collegiate in style. We bring in the teams one at a time, everything from, you know, the smoke machines to the, all the different bells and whistles that um, they're able to pull out. It's a uh, great, great fun for the kids. Uh, one of those things that we can market to our student athletes to say, hey, you know what? Like, I want to play soccer at green level, man. Like that media day looks awesome. That looks so cool. I can't wait to do that when I'm a senior. So uh, I know a lot of folks are doing uh, this and doing amazing jobs with it, um, but it helps especially early in the season, get you so much content. And we've only played two soccer games so far. We only had a photographer uh, at one of them. So I have very few action shots from the 2024 men's soccer season, right? But I have all the stuff from Media Day. So I can use that stuff until we can kind of populate, you know, the uh, the action shot libraries from the games. But uh, really, really important, ton of fun for the kids and helps you um, build great content for your libraries. And as Colin said, you can do this a lot of different ways. I think at a bare minimum, every department should try to before the season, get a headshot, and it can be just on the cell phone, get a headshot of every student athlete. Because again, that gives you a photo that you can utilize no matter what to showcase that student athlete. If they win an award, if they score a great goal, if you wanna spotlight them, right? Parents love seeing their kids. The kids love seeing themselves. It creates more of engaging content. Uh, try to just set up that basic foundational media day where you just get a single photo of everyone and you can line that up beginning of the season at practice, you take your headshots on a phone, right? That can be super helpful. The other thing, talk to your students, talk to your staff, parents, yearbook club, are there other folks that can help with collecting or creating content through creating great photos and videos at games? And then we do have a feature at Gipper called content requests. This is on a premier plan, but it allows you to collect photos and videos seamlessly from your community members who may not be utilizing Gipper at all. So if you have someone you know, throughout the season on the football team, a parent that's taking great photos, you can send them a content request for that season. They upload those photos and videos whenever they like into that request, and it will automatically be stored in your Gipper account for you to utilize when creating graphics, posting out to social media, or plugging it into your newsletter. Real quick plug on content requests. The coolest thing we've done with content requests, and we've done it every year now, is we send them out to our uh, recently graduated student athletes to essentially create um, you know, good luck videos, if you will, for the upcoming season. All those kids are now off at college. You know, Some of them are playing at the collegiate level. Uh, the content requests make it super easy for them to record a quick 15, 20 second video. You know, hey guys, you know, it's it's Rebecca. Uh, you know, I'm in my dorm room right now. I'm off at college. I, I miss you guys so much. You know, best of luck this year. The kids absolutely eat that up. Uh, just something really cool that you can do on content requests to kind of bring that community back together. Awesome, love it. And then athletic department newsletters. Uh, this is something that Colin, you have just done in incredible ways at Green Level. Uh, a newsletter is a way to share updates and announcements that will drive your community to action. Newsletters as a medium have exploded 
over the last few years where individuals from a business standpoint are creating regular newsletters, uh, communications, and they're building businesses that are worth over $100 million. And it's just them writing, including some photos and sending it out. Every athletic department should have some sort of regular newsletter where they communicate about their program, get important information out, and share the stories, highlight the success of their program. Could you talk a little bit about what you've done with Swamp Stories and introduce that to folks who are not familiar? Yeah, absolutely. So Swamp Stories is our monthly athletic department newsletter. Um, as I indicated earlier on, um, this is not just me. Um, I have uh, the good fortune of having a lot of folks around me that are able to help me uh, with this content. Um, we have a, a teacher in our English department who essentially serves as our sports information director. So when we uh, put Swamp Stories together every month, we've kind of gotten into a nice rhythm. We're, we're heading towards uh, volume six. And uh, I have my sections that I work on. Our sports information guy has his sections that he works on. We collaborate on the newsletter together, put it together. We put it out monthly. Um, we've only done it again. You know, we, we started in the spring when, when Gipper rolled this out um, and we'll have our sixth volume coming out. Uh, here early in September, but it's now become sort of part of the rhythm of our athletic program. People expect it. I've heard so many compliments about it. Oh, I love the new newsletter. It's great. You know, I, I, I bookmark it because I'm always going back and, um, you know, using links that are in there and, and going back to remind myself of key dates that are coming up. You know, we've essentially built out, you know, eight or 10 sections in there that we're, we're repeating month over month and updating the content. And of course, any any month where we have something new and exciting, we might might add a couple of little things in there. But once you build up that first newsletter and you build up that template and you start um, adding different sections, it's really repeatable, uh, really easy to put back together. You know, I, I don't think we spend probably more than an hour, um, if, if not less uh, now each month, just kind of updating that information and getting it back out to folks. But it's been wildly popular. Uh, we communicate it out via all of our different um, communication channels and um, it seems to be getting a lot of eyeballs because I'm getting a lot of compliments on it. And we know as ADs, we don't always get compliments on, on some of the things we do. So anytime we can find something that is essentially universally adored, as now Swamp Stories is, uh, we're going to continue with that. Awesome. At, at a high level, Colin, why do you even create a newsletter? Because I think folks are out there, again, busy AD, lots of different things going on. Why do I need to create this on top of everything else? Yeah, it's just a great place for people to go to get some of that information, um, you know, that they may miss uh, just in the day to day on 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 social media channels or or via, you know, team specific communication. One of the things I like about newsletters is it really allows us to kind of dig a little bit deeper uh, into some of those stories of our athletes, of our coaches, of the big game, of the comeback that many people might have just totally missed or just kind of went right over their head. But it allows us to help celebrate some of those, um, you know, student athletes who are really going above and beyond in the classroom, in the community, on the playing field. And it also allows us uh, oftentimes to highlight some of the sports that maybe don't get the recognition that they deserve on the, you know, on the day to day. You know, at our school, we have several fall sports that essentially practice and compete off campus. You know, I'm thinking about gymnastics. I'm thinking about cross country incredible sports, incredible student athletes, but they just don't get kind of that hype and that buzz on campus that the football team does or the volleyball team does or the soccer team does because, you know, I'm looking out my window and they're, they're playing right there. Uh, when our, you know, cross country team is, is running on the trails, you know, 10 miles from campus. And let's be honest, it's not really much of a spectator sport because they run into the woods and then they show back up, you know, 15, 18 minutes later. So um, newsletters is just a great spot to highlight all of our student athletes, of course, but then to take some of those deeper dives, maybe into some of those sports and those stories that uh, really deserve more than, you know, um, a handful of characters on X or Instagram. Awesome. All right. And now we talked about the content. I want to talk about how technology can help do the work for you. So one graphics creation tools, hopefully you're using something to help when it comes to creating your graphics. Uh, if you're in Photoshop or trying to create these uh, in a really manual, tedious way yourself today, uh, you are likely wasting your time. Uh, so the benefits of a graphic creation tool like Gipper, you can have ready-made templates, right? That already are purpose-built for athletic departments and the busy AD in mind, game day, score updates, season schedules, you name it. At Gipper, we have over 4,000, the largest template library uh, in the market, all of the different types of content that you could be looking for as an athletic director and the customization with quick and easy editing to make it super easy for you to create that content and get it out. I speak to ADs all the time. The sometimes single AD department, one person department, they're amazed when they come into Gipper and they're able to create a season's worth of content in almost no time. 
and people speak to them and they go, how do you do this? Or please thank your team. We've heard that multiple times. Please thank your team for us to the athletic director of a one person department. So there's technology out there at Gipper. We pride ourselves on making this easy, making this fast. Uh, make sure you're leveraging that. And then we have a mobile app for creating on the go. So you can create on the sidelines and automation that does the work for you. So we have a feature called auto brand uh, as an example that allows you to apply your official branding, your official logo and colors to any template in one click. You can upload your own fonts into Gipper as well to utilize those. And then we have social scheduling features. So you can automate your social media posts to go out at a specific day or time in the future, whether that's you posting a game day craft, a graphic to go out scheduled on a Wednesday at 7 p.m., but it's Sunday morning, or you wanna post just a photo or a video to social media, you can do all of that through Gipper and our social scheduling and publishing tools. I think Autobrand is one that uh, we released at the end of the spring that's been pretty transformative for athletic directors because it takes the creation of a graphic uh, you know, down to just a matter of seconds. I don't know, Colin, uh, what are your thoughts on, on Autobrand and utilizing that for your department? Changed my life. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's incredible. Um, like you said, something that was already very quick and um, you know intuitive uh, has become e even easier. And I have found myself using uh, content planner and, and scheduling um, our posts much more frequently. We know we don't get a lot of downtime, but when we do, um, there's nothing like knocking out maybe three or four game day graphics, scheduling those out for the week. And that's just one thing that we can kind of check off on our our, our physical checklist or in our mind to say, you know what, like that's done. Like we got JV football tomorrow night. I've already, I've already made that graphic. It's going to go out tomorrow at nine 30 in the morning. I'm good. I can focus on other things. Um, so incredibly helpful. Um, one of the best advancements that uh, Gipper's done in a long time. I love it. Awesome. And then newsletters. So um, you can create, right. An email communication that you can distribute uh, out to your communities as a basic newsletter that has your information, text, you know, whatever it may be. But we introduced a feature at the end of the spring called Gipper Newsletters that allows you to create these newsletters really easily within your Gipper account. We have ready-made templates that are designed for you for regular newsletters, but also other things like visitor guides that you can send to folks who are coming on campus to see events or even uh, a, a press release tons of different examples of content beyond newsletters, but for the purpose of the digital marketing basics, you can come into Gipper, you can easily create a monthly or weekly newsletter for your athletic department. We recommend a community newsletter. So getting things out to your parents, your students, all the fans and the community members around your athletic department, but you can also do internal newsletters to staff, coaches, whoever. And the great thing is with a newsletter, especially built in with Gipper, you can leverage the content you're already creating in Gipper. So you can take that game day graphic that you posted to social media and plug it into your newsletter. That photo you have stored or video, put it into your newsletter. So it takes the creation time down, makes it really easy and manageable for you to get this communication out. And the recommendation is start easy. Start with more of a monthly newsletter if you're feeling intimidated or worried about, hey, can I commit to this? And don't worry about overloading it with content. Start with some basics, maybe a student athlete spotlight, a coach spotlight, include your athletes of the week, and some stories, uh, maybe one or two about the department and key information. Uh, don't worry about overdoing it to start. Just create something, get into it, get it out, and you'll start to build from there. But uh, check it out on Gipper if you haven't already. And Colin has great examples. Team, if you could put it in the chat to showcase some examples from Colin and other folks, regular newsletters, uh, that would be great. And then generating meaningful revenue. So we talked about this at the beginning, how with great marketing, great communication, there are revenue opportunities. And I think this is something that is still just scratching the surface for athletic departments around the country at the high school level, but use your content to open up new sponsorship opportunities to bring in more funds that can help create an even better experience for student athletes. So two forms of sponsorship that again, are nascent in high school athletics, but are big in college and professional sports. Social media sponsorship, including business logos and a reference to them in the caption of a post. So for example, the Chipotle game day of the week, one game a week, the Chipotle logo is included on that game day graphic and it's referenced in the caption, Instagram, Facebook, X, wherever you're sharing content and a newsletter sponsorship. If you have a monthly recurring newsletter, that's a great thing to take to a local business and say, Hey, 
This is something we send out to our entire community, parents, student athletes, coaches, whoever, do you wanna be our title sponsor? Include that sponsor at the top of the newsletter. This newsletter is brought to you by XYZ, another great opportunity to generate revenue. Colin, this is something that you've utilized. Would love to hear your thoughts from the seat of the athletic director. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think there's so much untapped potential um, in um, soliciting sponsorships um, via your various social media channels. Um, full disclosure, uh, this year uh, in, in our corporate sponsorship kind of uh, world through our Athletic Booster Club, we have secured $5,000 in um, corporate sponsorships just for people to be featured on our social media posts. That's the only expectation. I'm not doing banners in the stadium. You know, we're not doing PA announcements for them. They're not on our you know video board in the gym. They want their clickable logos. They want their logos on our X posts, on our Insta posts, in our newsletter. That's all that they want because I have the analytics and I am able to tell them and show them that we are getting, and this doesn't even include newsletters, but we're getting about three quarters of a million impressions every month between just X and Instagram three quarters of a million impressions every month between X and Instagram, sometimes higher depending on the season and the success of our teams. When you tell a local business, I can get you three quarters of a million eyeballs on the monthly. If I can put your, your, your logo on our game day graphics or our final score graphics, they salivate over that. That's way more than I can get them in the stadium or in the gym or with a banner or with a sign. That's huge. Uh, so for us, it's become a uh, gipper essentially has become a, 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 money-making tool for our athletic program. Uh, we are bringing in more in corporate sponsorship dollars than we are spending on our Gipper subscription every year, period. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I'd be happy breaking even, but now we're, we're in the black. Um, so that's fantastic. And I think um, when you can have those conversations with local businesses uh, and your corporate sponsors about what you can provide to them and the demographic, the, the, the kids, kind of that, that age group that they want, they know that are coming into their store and, and buying lunch or dinner or shopping. Um, that's huge. So um, think about how you can do that. Create yourself a nice visual uh, showing those analytics. Um, you can very easily find those um, on your X account or via Instagram um, and, you know, put some numbers out there and see, uh, see what takes. But for us, it's been very successful. Yeah. And um, Colin, you're doing an amazing job for folks watching where you're just getting started. Um, you're, you're trying to build that presence. I would say don't worry so much about the sponsorship now. Worry more about being consistent, creating a community expectation that, hey, this is where our information goes out. These are the regular posts that we do. Um, and then from there, you'll have the opportunity to drive sponsorship at increasing amounts. Um, but you don't need to jump right into sponsorship, right? Um, I think the theme here with the foundational work, with the basics is start small, do the key things right, have your social media presence for your athletic department, create a recurring newsletter, have an official brand that informs the content that you're creating and communicate it across those channels. If you do that well, you're consistent, you're gonna build a recognizable brand, you're gonna shape positive perception, and then these revenue opportunities will absolutely come. And the final thing here, we're right at the end, I know we ran late here, um, reusing content. Don't overdo the work. The great thing is uh, once you create a piece of content, whether it's a photo, or a graphic, you can use it in these different ways across channels. You create your game day graphic for social media. You can publish it X, Facebook, Instagram, and one click from Gipper. You can then drop it into your newsletter that you send out across email, messaging apps, social media, all your other channels, put it on the website. And you can even put that content up on digital boards around campus. We hear this all the time, but you don't need to overdo the work. Create the content once, one photo, one video, one graphic, distribute it across these channels. Don't overdo it. Don't have to, you don't have to recreate everything from scratch every single time. Okay. I know we've ran a bit long here. Thank you uh, for those of you who've stayed on. Athletic departments need to adopt modern digital marketing, but using tactics and tools that make it quick and easy to be successful, right? This is the key thing. What does it look like as a recap? What does it look like? Brand, channels, content. Consistently use your official brand assets. If you don't have them, you gotta create those. Reach out to us if you have questions about that. Be omni-channel, social media, email, web. Have a presence and get your content, your communication out to those channels. Create good content by using branded graphics and photos and videos. 
and have a weekly or monthly newsletter that communicates your athletic department, gets key information out, showcases your program. And think mobile first, especially when it comes to web. Just make sure that when people are interacting with your content, that when it works, that when they're on their phone, it works, right? Because most people are looking at this stuff on their phone. All right. And the final thing here, and Colin, again, thank you so much. If you have the drop, please jump off. Uh, this has been awesome. Uh, but how do you make it quick and easy, right? Leverage best in class technology that can help do the work for you. We are here to help. This is what we spend day in and day out doing. Um, if you have any questions about Gipper, please reach out to us. You can start a free trial. If you're not a customer, uh, reach out in the chat. You can go to our website, speak with our sales team. Uh, we are here to help. Um, and again, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, wanting to get better. And uh, we're so excited to continue to help ADs everywhere. Colin, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to you because this is awesome. I know you're busy with back to school, uh, but uh, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom with uh, the ADs here. And uh, if there's anything you want to share uh, before you jump off, please do. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. No, absolutely. It was a pleasure. Um, previously, I had put my email in the chat. I'm going to do it again, um, just so Andy can grab it. So if there's anything you want to want to workshop or talk about or, um, you know, uh, share, uh, shoot me a note. I'm happy to connect via email and maybe we can even jump on the phone. Uh, you know, something's a little bit more nuanced, but um, there's my email address right there. And uh, would, would love to chat further about um, you know, marketing your programs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Colin. And thank you all for joining. Um, I've only seen one question so far that hasn't been answered in the chat. Um, there's a, a question about, and Colin, please jump if you need to get onto another call. Um, but I saw there was a question about from Dan, branding, is there a way to have the same font with each design? You can absolutely have the same font. Uh, you can upload your own fonts if you have custom fonts, or you can select one of ours. And every template's fonts are customizable, so you can go in and update them if you'd like. They're not a part of Autobrand today, so you can't apply them automatically to your template like you can with logos or colors. Um, but I think Jenna responded, that is definitely something that we will take back uh, and look into as a product team. If there are any other questions, please drop them in the chat and uh, I will help answer them. This is recorded, so you can absolutely take a look at this. Uh, at a later point, share it with other folks who may be interested. And um, a friendly reminder as well, we are running a back to school promotion for Gipper. Uh, so if you're a Gipper customer and you're on a basic or pro plan, you can receive a discount on an upgrade to a higher plan. And if you're not a Gipper customer, but thinking about it, this would be a great time to jump on board. It ends the end of August. Um, you can get a discount on any of our new plans. Team, if you could put that information in the chat, that would be great so folks can see it and get the details. Uh, but want to make sure everyone is aware of that. And again, I'll hold on here for just a, a minute or two longer. Please, if there's any questions, uh, drop them in. But again, a huge thank you for all of you for joining and, and being here today. David, how do we get some Gipper swag? I can only see your first name, so I don't know exactly who who, who that is. Um, but uh, that is something that we can look into. Uh, we don't have a swag store or anything yet, um, but uh, hopefully we can, we can figure something out. But um, I love I love the passion. That's pretty awesome. All right, David, what would you want from swag? Swag means a lot of things to different people. T-shirt. We are we are big on listening to our customers. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We can look into that. All right, folks. Well, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you all being here. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out, follow me uh, on Twitter or X, um, Matthew Glick, and then also at Go Gipper. Uh, we are going to continue to be a resource sharing great educational content, professional development. I want to make sure that you have all the tools to be successful when it comes to digital marketing, communications, and content creation. Have a great, great rest of your week, and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much, everyone.